Tiang An More Friends Global, Student Book, published by Vietnam Education Publishing House. Authors Vu Mei Lan, Huing Dong Hai, Nyung Tui Lian, Hung Nyok Tui Tiang, Chan Tui Tui Tien. CD 1. Track 1.2. Hi, Izzy. Can I sit here? Yes, of course. This is Becky. She's new. Hi, Becky. I'm Ryan, Izzy's brother. Hi. Nice to meet you. Where are you from, Becky? I'm from London. I moved here two weeks ago. I love London. I've got friends there. I sometimes visit them and we go skateboarding. Do you like skateboarding, Becky? Not really. But I like ice skating. Me too. Let's go ice skating after school. Great idea. I'm not very keen on ice skating. What do you think of bowling? Bowling? I hate it. Oh, actually, I don't mind ice skating. There's the bell. I've got maths, then history. I've got PE now. I love PE. See you after school, Izzy. Bye, Becky. Yeah, bye. Track 1.3 Hi. Hi, Toby. What are you doing? I'm at the sports centre. I'm waiting for Tom. Are you going swimming? No, we're playing table tennis. We play every Saturday morning. But he's really late. What's he doing? I don't know. He isn't answering his phone. Anyway, where are you? I'm at the shopping centre, but I'm not buying anything today. I'm just looking. Do you like table tennis? Do you want to play? Sure, but I'm not wearing sports clothes. Are you wearing trainers? Yes, I am, with jeans and a t-shirt. That's fine. You don't need sports clothes. See you soon. Track 1.4 Anxious Ashamed Bored Confused Cross Delighted Disappointed Embarrassed Envious Excited Frightened Proud Relieved Shocked Suspicious Upset Track 1.5 Shame Awe Confuse Delight Embarrass Excite Frighten Relieve Shock Shamed, bored, confused, delighted, embarrassed, excited, frightened, relieved, shocked. Track 1.6. Speaker 1. Guess what? You know there's a big charity concert at Wembley Stadium next week? Well, I've got a ticket! I know! It's great, isn't it? Who's playing? <laughs> Loads of bands. Well, for a start, the Black Eyed Peas. I know! And Lady Gaga. And Katy Perry. I know! Amazing! I can't wait! Speaker 2 Hi. What are you up to? Oh, really? 
Really? Sounds good. Me? I'm baking. You know it's Matt's birthday on Saturday. <laughs> yes, it's a birthday cake. Chocolate and Brazil nut. He doesn't eat nuts. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh dear, that's bad news. But the nuts are big, he can leave them. What? He doesn't like chocolate. Are you sure? Oh, <sighs> that's really bad news. Speaker 3 Hello, Nicky. Yes, I'm at the bus stop. Sorry. But listen. No, but listen. Just listen a moment. I know, but I got here nearly an hour ago. There aren't any buses. I don't know why. It's really strange. Yes, they're usually every ten minutes. No, I, I really don't understand. Very strange. Speaker 4 Hi, Anna. I got a text from your brother about your exam. Congratulations! Brilliant news. What? Sorry? Uh, oh, you failed. Really? Uh, hang on. Let me read it again. Oh, yes. I'm so sorry I didn't read it properly. Uh, yes, yes, I'm sure you're feeling really bad. Actually, so am I, now. <laughs> Red face. Silly me. Track 1.7 In 2002, 19-year-old British refuse collector Michael Carroll and his family were delighted when he won £9.7 million in the lottery. He gave millions of pounds to charity and to friends and relatives. He also spent thousands on loud all-night parties, and over the next few years, he got into trouble with the police several times. His wife, Sandra, was cross and upset and decided to leave. Soon, he had no money left, and in 2010, he began work as a refuse collector again. I'm just glad it's over, he said. Track 1.8 A Hi, Zach. Do you fancy going into town? I'm sorry, Tom, I can't. I need to do some revision. Revision? For what? The exams next month. Oh, but they're six weeks away. I know. That's only two weeks for each subject. Look, I'm making a plan. This week it's maths. Next week... OK, OK. Calm down. I can't. I always do badly in exams. I want these ones to go well. I need to study. See you later. Hang on. Why do you do badly in exams? You always study a lot. I don't know. I panic, I suppose. Exactly. You panic. You need to stay calm. Take a break from your revision. Come with me into town. Then you can get back to your revision tomorrow. Well, I don't know. Maybe you're right, Tom. Great. Come on, then. But actually, I really want to finish this revision plan. Let's go out tomorrow. I'm busy tomorrow. Well, maybe at the weekend? I really think you should stop working for a bit. I'm sorry. Look, let's speak soon. <sighs> OK, it's your decision. Track 1.9 A Hi, Louis. Are you going to watch the match? Yes, I am. But I've also got this history project to finish, and the match starts in 20 minutes. Why don't we look at the project together? I've finished mine. I can help you. We can try and finish it before the football starts. Uh, to be honest, I'm a bit bored with it. Come on, let's turn the TV on. Are you sure? Yes, come on. Well, OK. It's your project. B. Hi, Emma. 
Can I ask your advice about something? Sure, Matt. What is it? My friend Toby's really angry with me. Oh dear. Why's that? Well, I wrote something on his Facebook page, and he didn't like it. Oh no. What did you write? Oh, it was just a silly joke. And he didn't find it funny. Exactly. What should I do? I feel so bad about it. Why don't you give him a call and chat about it? I tried that. He didn't answer. Well, why don't you text him? You have to keep trying. I know. C. Hi, Ryan. Oh, you don't look very happy. What's wrong? Well, I saw Brandon yesterday, and he told me about this girl, Amy. Go on. He really likes her. He wants to ask her out. So, what's the problem? I asked her out last week, and she said yes. Did you tell Brandon? No, I didn't. I'm embarrassed. I don't want him to get cross with me. But you can't keep it a secret. You have to tell the truth. Hmm. But it's difficult. Do you want me to have a word with him? Yes. Yes, please. Can you do that? Okay. I suppose so. D. Hi, Marcus. Hi, Alex. Can I ask your advice about something? Of course. Well, it's Jack's birthday tomorrow, and he's going out for dinner at a pizza restaurant. Okay. So what's the problem? I can't go. I haven't got any money. Oh, does Jack know that? No, he doesn't. I didn't say. You need to tell him. I know, but I'm embarrassed. Well, you could speak to Jack and make an excuse. Say you've got a family dinner. What? Tell a lie? I can't do that. It's only a little lie. That's my advice, anyway. Track one point ten. B. Hi, Emma. Can I ask your advice about something? Sure, Matt. What is it? My friend Toby's really angry with me. Oh dear. Why's that? Well, I wrote something on his Facebook page. And he didn't like it. Oh no! What did you write? Oh, it was just a silly joke. And he didn't find it funny. Exactly. What should I do? I feel so bad about it. Why don't you give him a call and chat about it? I tried that. He didn't answer. Well, why don't you text him? You have to keep trying. I know. C. Hi, Ryan. Oh, you don't look very happy. What's wrong? Well, I saw Brandon yesterday, and he told me about this girl, Amy. Go on. He really likes her. He wants to ask her out. So, what's the problem? I asked her out last week, and she said yes. Did you tell Brandon? No, I didn't. I'm embarrassed. I don't want him to get cross with me. But you can't keep it a secret. You have to tell the truth. Hmm. But it's difficult. Do you want me to have a word with him? Yes. Yes, please. Can you do that? Okay. I suppose so. D. Hi, Marcus. Hi, Alex. Can I ask your advice about something? Of course. Well, it's Jack's birthday tomorrow, and he's going out for dinner at a pizza restaurant. Okay. So what's the problem? I can't go. I haven't got any money. Oh, does Jack know that? No, he doesn't. I didn't say. You need to tell him. I know, but I'm embarrassed. Well, you could speak to Jack and make an excuse. Say you've got a family dinner. What? Tell a lie? I can't do that. It's only a little lie. That's my advice, anyway. Track one point eleven. Hi Emma, did you go out last night? Yes, I went to the cinema. Oh, really? Who did you go with? My sister. What did you see? The new Jennifer Lawrence film. Did you enjoy it? No, it wasn't great, and I couldn't see the screen very well. The man in front of me was really tall, and he didn't stop talking to his girlfriend. Oh, I hate that. And that's not all. I lost my mobile. I think I dropped it in the cinema. Track one point twelve.
You didn't leave your mobile at the cinema. You lent it to me, remember? I didn't give it back to you.、Oh, yes, of course. Can you bring it to school tomorrow? I'm really sorry, but I left it on the bus yesterday evening. Oh no! What did you do? Did you ring the bus company? Yes, I did, but、uh, they couldn't find it. It wasn't on the bus. Don't worry, I phoned your number. Did anyone answer? Yes, Lucy from our class. Why did she have my phone? Was she on the bus with you? Yes, she picked it up by mistake. She's bringing it to school tomorrow. Track one point thirteen. All children hurt themselves from time to time. But when thirteen-year-old Ashlyn Blocker gets injured, she doesn't realize it. Once, when she burned herself, she only knew about it when she looked at her skin. There was always something different about Ashlyn. As a baby, she didn't cry. When she was eight months old, her parents noticed there was some blood in her eye, so they took her to see a doctor. The doctor found a serious cut in her eye and was shocked. Why didn't the baby cry? Tests showed that Ashlyn had a very unusual medical condition. She couldn't feel any pain. This condition is very rare. Many people who have it die of it. Pain is a natural warning that you're ill or injured. People who can't feel pain just don't realize they're in danger. The first few years of Ashlyn's life were very difficult. She often tripped and injured herself. Once she broke her ankle, but she didn't stop running. During school breaks, one teacher watched Ashlyn all the time in the playground, and they had to search for cuts, bruises, or other injuries. When she was five. Ashlyn's story appeared in newspapers and on TV. Scientists studied her condition and found she has a genetic disorder that means pain signals do not reach her brain. Unfortunately, at the moment there is no hope of a cure, and as Ashlyn knows, a life without pain is both difficult and dangerous. Track one point fourteen. Hi, Laurie. How are you? Tell me about your summer holiday. Well, for the first three weeks, I was at a summer camp in Cornwall. Really? That sounds like fun. Yes, it was. I learned a new sport: bodyboarding. Wow, that sounds great. Yes, I loved it. It was really exciting, and a bit frightening too. I bet. What else did you get up to over the summer? Well, the second half of the holiday wasn't so good. I got a stomach bug and spent nearly a week on the sofa. Oh dear! How awful! Hmm. I didn't leave the house for days. I just watched DVDs. I was so bored. Track one point fifteen. Speaker one. I spent the last two weeks of the summer holiday with my cousins in Newcastle. While I was there, I took part in the Great North Run, a half marathon. I'm not a keen runner, but two of my cousins are. Twenty-one kilometers. The amazing thing is, I actually didn't feel exhausted at the end. I couldn't understand it. Okay, so my time wasn't very good. But I didn't really care about that. I was just amazed I finished it. Speaker two. I was in Cornwall for two weeks with my family. We stayed in a cottage near the sea. The weather was great, hot and sunny every day. In fact, I got burned quite badly on my shoulders. My brother really laughed at me, but I didn't think it was amusing at all. In fact, I was quite anxious about it. After all, sunburn can cause serious problems with your skin when you're older. Speaker three. At the beginning of the summer, I spent a week on the south coast of England with my dad. 
I went to visit my friend Macy, who moved there last year. She's got an amazing house. It's got about seven bedrooms and a cinema room, and the garden is enormous. There's a swimming pool and a tennis court. I wish I lived in a place like that. I really do. She's so lucky. Track one point seventeen. Speaker one. I love the UK. I just love the atmosphere, the culture, the art, the history. There is also beautiful scenery in places like Cornwall and Scotland. The people here are kind and friendly. The only things I don't like about the UK are the weather and the food. I had some really bad fish and chips recently. Speaker two. British people don't care about their work like we do. They aren't very hard working, really. They spend all day waiting to finish work and go home. And when they leave work, they forget about it. I have my own cafe here in Cardiff, and for me, my work is my life. Speaker three. I find the British people very friendly. And I love an English breakfast and fish and chips, but I don't like it when I finish work at eleven p.m. or midnight, and young people are causing trouble in the street. It's not always nice, and they make a lot of noise. I don't worry for me, but I'm anxious for my wife at night over here. Overall, though, I like living in Britain. It's much better than back home. Speaker four. Okay, the weather definitely is not great, but I love the freedom of living in the UK. It's so friendly and welcoming. It was difficult for me when I first arrived at the age of sixteen. I was used to rules. My family came first, and I always obeyed my parents. I never answered back, but British teenagers have so much more freedom. They don't have many rules, and that's not always a good thing. They often behave badly. Track one point eighteen. One. Are you looking for the perfect gift or an amazing experience with your friends? Then come to Extreme Elements. We have hundreds of ideas for active people. How about flying lessons, or a helicopter flight, or go quad biking for a day? Would you prefer rock climbing or canoeing? There's something for everyone. So visit our website now. Two. Thank you for inviting me to Careers Week.、Uh, let me start by telling you how I got started. At school, I enjoyed sport and was in the football and basketball teams. One day, I heard about a new course at the local swimming pool: scuba diving. I wasn't interested, but my friend wanted to go, so I decided to go with him. I loved it. I did several courses. Then I did my teaching qualification, and now I'm an instructor. Three. We all know that exercise helps you to lose or to control your weight. It also helps you sleep better and look better too. But don't forget that exercise can also be fun. There's no need to go running if you find it boring. Why don't you choose a team game such as football or basketball? You can join a club, have fun, and meet other people who enjoy that sport too. Four. Do you love sport and meeting people? Then come and see local celebrity and Olympic winner Amelia Green at Brightside Leisure this Saturday at two p.m. She is opening the new Olympic pool that we've all been waiting for. It's fantastic, and there is a free swim for the first fifty people.
Track 1.19 A. There are two people on a bridge near a forest. There's a waterfall and some rocks below them. The bridge goes across a river. B. There is a man standing on some rocks at the top of a hill. He's looking out over a valley. C. This man is climbing up a cliff. You can see the ocean and the rocks below. D. This diver is inside an underwater cave in the ocean. He's looking between the rocks. E. This person is in a small boat. It's a kayak. The kayak is on a lake near the shore. In the background, there are mountains. Track 1.20 Speaker 1 Bored with the beach? Hungry for adventure? Why not spend seven days in a remote and beautiful landscape in Alaska? Kayak across icy lakes and shallow rivers. See eagles, bears and other fascinating wildlife. Or just enjoy the amazing scenery from your river kayak journey through tall mountains and deep valleys. Speaker 2 For experienced divers only, this holiday offers an amazing chance to explore the rocky caves by boat along the coast of Mexico. After three days near the caves, the boat leaves the steep cliffs and heads for the ocean for two days, a chance to see some of Mexico's amazing marine wildlife. Speaker 3 On this seven-day walking holiday in the Philippines, you'll see mountains and valleys, lakes and forests. But the highlight of the week is the chance to stand beside Lake Pinatubo, a lake inside a volcano. When Mount Pinatubo erupted in 1991, the top of the volcano blew off. A shallow lake formed which soon became deep because of all the rain. Enjoy a swim in this beautiful and exotic natural feature. Speaker 4 Join Forest Trekkers on a two-week Canadian adventure you'll never forget. Kayak down narrow rivers under the trees or walk across high wooden bridges. Find dark caves behind tall waterfalls. We promise you'll fall in love with this exciting and magical landscape. Track 1.21 Fred I like base jumping because it allows me to get away from the city to remote places where you hardly see anyone. Sally. Base jumping is really a sport for young people. There aren't many base jumpers who are over 30. Chris. I love the outdoors, but I'm not particularly brave, so I haven't considered base jumping as a hobby. Selena. Base jumping certainly isn't a sport to try if you are unfit. Shelley. Base jumping is a great sport, and you get to do it in such spectacular surroundings. Martin. My friend asked me to go base jumping with him, and I hated it. Track 1.22. Good afternoon and welcome to the programme. Today I'm talking to base jumper Tanya Marks. Tanya, thanks for joining us. <laughs> my pleasure. Now, Tanya, my first question to you is basically why? Why choose a sport with so many dangers? Why not something nice and safe like table tennis? <laughs> 
Extreme sports aren't safe. That's precisely why I enjoy them so much. I'm the kind of person who loves to feel that thrill of risk and adventure. I like skydiving and hang gliding too, but base jumping is my new sport and my obsession. I'm totally addicted. <laughs> How did you first get into it? One of my skydiving friends suggested it. He had the equipment and invited me to join him. My first jump was terrifying, but I loved it. What's your favourite place for base jumping? Well, I'm always looking for somewhere new, but at the moment, I love the cliffs in Tonsai in Thailand. Though it isn't ideal, as there are no hospitals nearby. Ah, so is danger always in your mind when you're jumping? <laughs> oh yes, but that's not just me. That's all base jumpers. We know the dangers. Do you think that's why there aren't many women who do base jumping? Do the risks put them off? I'm not sure. I don't really agree. More women are joining the sport every year. There's Roberta Mancino, for example. She's the new star of base jumping. The media love her because of the way she looks, but she's also brilliant at her sport. Hopefully, she'll encourage more girls to take up extreme sports. Tanya Marks, thank you. Track one point twenty three. Still underwater, he swam close to the boat, then came up silently and climbed aboard. Three people were arguing loudly. While he was listening to their argument, the boat's engine started. The boat began to move away. As he was deciding what to do, he heard a scream. Someone fell into the water. Harry realized who it was and jumped in too. Track one point twenty four. The woman in the water was Sophie. She and Harry were both police officers. They were investigating a diamond robbery. Sophie wasn't moving, so Harry held her head above the water and swam with her back to the shore. When they reached the shore, Sophie opened her eyes again. What happened? Asked Harry. I told the robbers that I wanted to buy the diamonds, replied Sophie. One of them believed me, but the other didn't. He tried to kill me. Harry looked out to sea. The boat was turning round. Why are they coming back? He said. They want the diamonds, said Sophie. Look, I've got them. I was holding them when he pushed me into the sea. Track one point twenty five. Entertain. Entertainment. Erupt, eruption. Examine, examination. Motivate, motivation. Relax, relaxation. Rescue, rescue. Track one point twenty six. A dream holiday turned into a nightmare for an American brother and sister, Dan and Kate Suski. During a fishing trip in the Caribbean, their boat sank. The weather wasn't brilliant that day, but Dan had caught a huge fish. He was trying to pull it onto the boat when the captain realized water was coming into the cabin. The boat. Was sinking fast. The captain used his radio to send a message for help. Then he shouted, "Jump out!" So they did, and a few minutes later, the boat disappeared under the waves. They were about fifteen kilometers from land. The captain said that help was coming. The weather was now awful, but they were wearing life jackets. After an hour, the captain and the Suskies lost each other, 
and there was no sign of rescue. So Dan and Kate started to swim as fast as they could towards land. They were both thinking the same terrifying thought. Sharks. A helicopter appeared, but nobody saw Dan and Kate in the water. Day turned to night, and the Suskies swam for 14 hours. Finally, they saw some cliffs. They were near land. But they couldn't get out of the water here. There were dangerous, sharp rocks. By now, they were exhausted. Eventually, they reached a sandy beach. Out of the water, at last, they lay down and rested. Then they found a town and picked some green bananas. Finally, they met a young farm worker. He gave them water and food and stayed with them until the police arrived. He also gave them some tragic news. The captain was lost at sea. After a few days in hospital, Dan and Kate were fine. Their story had another happy ending. A rescue boat found the captain after 23 hours in the water. Track 1.27 Student 1 Please describe the photo. Well, on the left there are some trees and in the centre there's a woman walking along. She's hiking somewhere. It looks like a, a forest. She's holding a pole in each hand and she's wearing a rucksack, I think. At the bottom of the picture, you can see that it's a really muddy path, but the woman doesn't look worried. She seems to be having a good time. Thank you. Student 2 Please describe the photo. The photo shows five people in a dinghy. They're white water rafting on a river. In the top left corner of the photo, there is a man leaning out of the boat. In the foreground, there's a lot of water. The man at the back of the dinghy is trying to guide the dinghy with his paddle. The other four people aren't helping very much. It looks as if they're new to it. They're all wearing the same life jackets and helmets. I imagine they're doing this as a holiday activity. Thank you. Track 1.28 Do you think the people are enjoying themselves? Yes, I think they are. Why do you think that? Well, basically, you can see it in their faces. They don't look scared at all. They're smiling and they seem really excited. Is it something that you would like to try? To be honest, no, I wouldn't. Oh? Why not? I think I'd be really scared. For me, the worst thing would be that I couldn't stop or get out of the dinghy. I'd have to keep going right to the end, even if I was having a bad time. Yes, I see what you mean. Now... Can you tell me about the last time you did an outdoor activity? Mm, a while ago, I went on a bike ride with a friend of mine. We headed out of town and through some woods. We took food and water with us. We stayed out for about six hours, but we didn't get bored at all. In fact, it was a really good day out. Uh, I suppose that's the last time I did an outdoor activity. OK, thank you. Track 1.29 Anne Davison Margaret Anne Longstaff was born on the 5th of June 1914 in Surrey, England. As a child, she really loved adventures. When she grew up, she travelled a lot. She liked riding horses, driving fast cars and flying aeroplanes. Anne became one of the very few women pilots in Britain in the 1930s. In 1947, Anne and her husband, Frank Davison, also a pilot, bought an old boat, Reliance, and decided to set sail to travel the world. However, they were caught in rough weather in the Irish Sea. 
the ship was wrecked and Frank was killed. Anne survived, washed offshore at the foot of a cliff. After recovering from the tragedy, Anne worked as a successful writer and waited for a chance to sail again. She became more determined to complete the challenge of a lifetime. She bought a small boat, Felicity Anne, F.A., and spent two years preparing it and teaching herself to sail. On the 18th of May, 1952, she departed from Plymouth. She was still relatively inexperienced, but she made up for lack of experience with bravery. With her strength of character, Anne and F.A. got through days of severe storms and loneliness. Anne Davison finally reached land in Dominica on the 23rd of January 1953, becoming the first woman to sail solo across the Atlantic. Track 1.30 1. Many students get very stressed about exams. But there are ways to beat that stress. The first thing you should do is to decide on a routine and a timetable for study and relaxation. When you're working, don't be tempted by computer games or by checking emails and text messages. Look after your health, eat and sleep properly and get regular exercise. What you do after the exam is important too. Don't get stressed about how well you've done. Walk out of the exam room and move on. 2. Hello, Amy. What's up? You look sad. Well, I am. My mum and dad have decided to move to Brighton. They're going to open a gift shop there. Brighton? I love Brighton. It's got a fantastic beach and loads of great shops and cafes. Yeah, but I've always lived here and I've got to go to a new school. I'm going to really miss you and all my other friends. Mm, I'm going to miss you too, Amy, but Brighton isn't far. We can visit you. Promise? (laughs) Yes, of course. Don't worry. 3. Hello and welcome. Today we're talking about Sarah Powers, who recently won a million pounds on the lottery. Now, what do you think she did with all that money? Did she go on a fantastic holiday or buy a new house? No, she didn't. Sarah gave all of the money away to charity. She said she didn't need money. She was happy with her life. So what do you think about that? We want to know your views. Phone us on the usual number and tell us. Track 1.31 Action Film Animation Picture C Chat Show Comedy Documentary Fantasy Film Picture B Game show. Picture D. Horror film. Musical. News bulletin. Period drama. Reality show. Romantic comedy. Science fiction film. Sitcom. Soap opera. Picture A. Talent show. Thriller War film Weather forecast Western Track 1.32 1 What are you doing in this town, Judd? It's my hometown, Doc. I can come here if I want, can I? I think you should stay away. It's a dangerous town. For people like you, get on your horse and ride! Two. Good day, sir. Good day, Miss Willoughby. Did you and your sisters enjoy the dance? 
I assume you are referring to the ball at Lord Blackstone's palace. Indeed. I'm sorry to say that I did not enjoy it. As for my sisters, you must ask them yourself. Good day, sir. Three. Susie? Is that you? It's me. But I thought... I thought you died. Hold my hand. Oh, it's so cold. Come with me. Uh, let go! Let go of my hand! <laughs> Four. Ship's computer? What is that planet? Zircon 5. Is it inhabited? Yes, but the inhabitants are primitive. They have no advanced technology. Activate shields! Their technology seems pretty advanced to me. 5. So, here comes your first question. Remember, this is for £20. What is the past form of the verb run? OK, let's try it another way. Today I run, yesterday I... Walked? Oh. No, I'm sorry. I can't give you that. Six. Good evening. Two more factories in Scotland are to close, with a loss of nearly a thousand jobs. Is the government doing enough? And in sport, Chelsea lose 4-0 to Manchester United. But first, the President of the United States... Track 1.33 one. What did you think of that? It was okay. The ending was quite moving. I know. I was crying at an animated film. How embarrassing. <laughs> Me too. Oh well. There were some really funny scenes too. Yes, like the one on the boat. I loved that. So did I. Two. Did you like that? No, I didn't. And I usually enjoy thrillers. Oh. Why didn't you like it? Uh, I found the plot really confusing. It just didn't make sense. Well, it did, in a way. I know what you mean. But it didn't bother me. Hmm. Well, I didn't understand it. And the special effects were spectacular. Uh, I suppose so. But I'm just not very interested in special effects. Three. Did you enjoy that? Yes, I loved it. The acting was totally convincing. It was a bit boring, though. I mean, not much happened. What do you mean? Lots of things happened. They argued, they fell in love, they split up. Maybe I just don't like romantic comedies. Why not? Because there are no car chases. I'm amazed you didn't like it. I found the characters really interesting. I just found it... boring. Sorry. Four. Well, what did you think? Uh, I was terrified. Yes, you screamed when that teacher came back to life. Did I? How embarrassing. <laughs> the soundtrack was really cool. I know. I want to buy it. The script was really unnatural in places, though. Horror films always have unnatural scripts. Mm, I know. Still, it was really good. Yeah. Track 1.34 Look, there's a building with some people outside. Turn left just before you get there. I can't see any people. There isn't much light. Hey, what's that noise? Nothing. There was some rubbish in the road. Oh, I hate this part of town. There aren't many nice areas. Let's go north. How much fuel have we got? Mm, only a few litres. Oh no, listen. 
The police are chasing us now. Let me drive. I know a few tricks. Jack? Are you doing any homework in there? Uh, yes. We're doing a little IT homework. Jack, that's not true. Well, we're spending a lot of time on the computer. <laughs> but we aren't doing any work. <laughs> Track 1.35 Your toast's ready. But I hate brown bread. Just try it. Do I have to? Okay, just one bite. Mmm, not bad. It tastes like white bread. I know, but it's a 100% organic wholemeal. Really? Well, it tastes great. Do you want the goodness of brown bread, but the taste of white bread? Why not try Hathaway's new organic bread? It's baked from 100% wholemeal flour with a delicious natural taste. It's perfect for sandwiches and toast, and it gives kids the energy they need for a busy day. <laughs> Ask for Hathaway's organic wholemeal. A delicious and convenient food for all the family. Start the day with Hathaway. Track 1.36 1. So, how did it go? Not very well. For a start, I arrived late. Oh no, why? My taxi broke down. Can you believe it? How awful. That's really bad luck. So I had to run to the interview. I looked a mess when I arrived. How annoying. And I answered the questions really badly. Well, maybe you did okay. It's difficult to know. Not this time. But you're great at your job. Thanks. But I'm disappointed because I did badly in the interview. It's a shame. Good jobs in advertising are very hard to find. Well, never mind. You'll get another chance. Sometimes when one door closes, another opens. Just... Two. At the traffic lights, go straight on. Traffic lights? What traffic lights? There aren't any traffic lights. Turn left. Oh, OK. Turn right. Right? You said left. In 50 metres, turn right. 50 metres? 50 metres? There isn't a road. This is so confusing. Turn right now. How can I turn right when there isn't a road? How can I? I don't understand. Error. You have followed an incorrect route. Recalculating. This is impossible. I, I'm exhausted. I'm turning the sat-nav off. Goodbye. Three. So, this is the slogan for the new online advert. Yoga holidays, put your feet up. And the picture shows a woman standing on her head in a yoga position. Mm. Do you see? It's a play on words. Put your feet up, as in relax, but her feet are in the air. <laughs> I'm really happy with that slogan. Hmm. I'm not very keen on it. She looks a bit uncomfortable to me. Oh. Have you got any other ideas? Well, we thought of a few others, but we rejected them. Some were inappropriate. Others were just a bit boring. Can you tell us what they were? Yes, of course. Our first idea was just yoga, learn to relax. Oh, I like that. I don't think it's boring. It's clear. It's simple. I think you're right. It's perfect. Don't you think the new one is more amusing? No, definitely not. Well, of course, it's your decision. Track 1.37
This question is for one hundred and twenty-five thousand pounds. Jill, in the sitcom How I Met Your Mother, what is Ted Mosby's job? Is it A. Lawyer, B. Designer, C. Architect, or D. Reporter? Um, I'd like to ask the audience, please. Okay, audience, you must answer A, B, C, or D on your keypads now. Okay, thirty percent think it's B, and fifty percent think it's C. But you needn't take their advice.、Mm, I'm not sure.、Um, I think I'll phone my friend Danny. Okay, Danny. Jill has a question worth one hundred and twenty-five thousand pounds. You must answer within thirty seconds. Okay. Um, I think it's B, or maybe C. No, it's D. Sorry, you're out of time. Okay, Jill, you don't have to answer the question. You can walk away with sixty-four thousand pounds. Um. I'm going to answer C. Final answer? No. Yes. No. You don't have to change your mind. <sighs> um, the answer is B. Final answer. Oh, Jill, the answer is C. Architect. You've just lost thirty-two thousand pounds. Track one point thirty eight. Many people assume that video games have a negative effect on young people. A lot of time in front of a screen is bad for the mind and the body, and combat games cause concern because they contain violence. Newspapers often express the same opinion. However, according to a report in American Psychologist. Playing video games can be good for children's education, health, and social skills. Video games can actually improve certain mental skills. Combat games, for example, teach players to think in three dimensions. This helps children with science, technology, engineering, and maths. Other types of video game can have other positive effects. In 2013. Research showed that children who play role-playing games get better grades at school than those who don't play them. Other research showed that playing any video game improves children's creativity. Quick and simple games like Angry Birds can improve a player's mood and prevent them from feeling anxious. The report also says that video games teach children how to react well to failure. Because players continually fail and try again, this makes them emotionally strong in real life. Video games can improve social skills too, the report says. More than seventy percent of gamers play with a friend, and many take part in online games like Farmville with millions of other people. The players learn how to lead a group, work together, and make decisions. Overall. The report accepts that some video games can have negative effects, but reminds us that they can have benefits too. Track one point thirty nine. So, which film shall we see? I quite fancy the romantic comedy. They're usually very funny, and I think it'll be easy to follow. Sorry, but I'm not a big fan of romantic comedies. The stories are always so silly. I'd prefer the horror film. As you can see in the poster, someone is trying to escape, and it looks really exciting. Oh, I don't agree. I'm not keen on scary films. Oh, okay. What about the period drama? Yes, I quite like them. Shall we settle on that then? It starts at seven. What time shall we meet up? I can come to your house at six if you like, and we can take the bus into town.
I'll already be in town, so I'd rather meet at the cinema. Let's meet there at 6.15. 6.15 is a bit too early. What about 6.30? OK, 6.30. That's agreed then. Shall we invite anyone else? I think Donna likes period dramas. To be honest, I don't get on very well with Donna. Can we invite someone else? How about Tom? Yes, that's a great idea. I'll text him and see if he wants to come. Track 1.40 Shrink Twin Problem Scream Helped Address Three Next Against Hops Track 1.41 You vs Wild is a new series created by survival expert Bear Grylls. It was released in 2019 and is already really popular. So, what's so special about it? Well, it's interactive. The viewer is allowed to make decisions, a bit like in a video game. Each episode introduces a challenge that Bear Grylls asks viewers to help him solve. The first episode starts with Grylls in a small plane trying to search for a doctor. The doctor is delivering malaria vaccines to children, but she has got lost in the jungle. As Grylls continues on his challenge, facing all the dangers of the jungle, he asks the viewer to choose options. For example, he's got space in his rucksack for one more item, a hook for climbing rocks, or a slingshot to kill animals, or protect himself from them. Pictures of the two objects appear on the screen, and the viewer chooses one. Then, the programme continues depending on the viewer's decision. Each episode finds Bear Grylls in different parts of the world, such as jungles, snowy mountains and deep caves. They all have exciting music and are full of action. Do you think you're ready for the ultimate survival challenge? Track 1.42 1 Can I have your attention please? Could all swimmers taking part in the under 15 swimming races please go to reception? We need to know you're here so please sign in with your coaches. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for coming. It's going to be a great day. Two. Hello, and thank you for asking me to your school. I'm going to start by telling you how I became interested in film. I've always loved the cinema, and at first I thought I wanted to be an actor. Then I became more interested in what the actors were wearing. I loved historical films, but also science fiction. All those amazing alien costumes. I was good at art at school, and I knew that costume design was what I wanted to study when I left school. 3. This week's topic is superheroes. It all began in the late 1930s, when Superman appeared as the first comic book character with superpowers. Many amazing characters followed, including Wonder Woman, who was the first female superhero. In the 1950s, television arrived, and superheroes became less popular. But then, in the 1960s, Batman appeared in a TV series, and everybody loved superheroes again. Today, superheroes are more popular than ever with huge blockbusters like Iron Man and The Avengers. 4. DJ Sam is letting me talk for a moment on this great show. I'm Marty, and I formed a rock band, The Thunder, last year with four other guys from Year 9. You've probably heard us on this show a couple of times, and also heard us practising after school. We're pretty loud. Unfortunately, Harley, our drummer, moved to Scotland with his family, so now we're looking for a replacement. Please email me if you play drums and you're interested. 
DJ Sam will give the address later. Tiang An More Friends Global Student Book Published by Vietnam Education Publishing House Authors Vu Mei Lan Huing Dong Hai Nyung Tui Lian Hung Nyok Tui Tiang Chan Tui Tui Tien CD 2 Track 2.2 1 It's minus 10 degrees Celsius and there's a lot of ice everywhere. On cars, on trees, on houses, the ice is 10 centimeters thick in some places. In a strange way, it's beautiful to look at, but icy roads are dangerous for drivers and pedestrians. And there are many homes in the area without electricity. We're expecting a little snow this afternoon. 2. There is some snow on the ground, and already it's impossible to see more than a few meters ahead. There isn't any fog, but the wind is blowing the snow into my face. It's difficult just to open my eyes. It's very cold, it's very windy, and this reporter is very glad to be going inside now. 3. It began this morning. The sky became very cloudy and the air felt stormy. There were a few showers and it was windy, too. Everyone knew what was happening, and many people left their homes and went inland, away from the coast. Now there's a lot of rain and the wind is extremely strong. Nobody is outside. It isn't safe. Track 2.3 Greece is hotter than the UK. It isn't as warm as yesterday. Yesterday, London was as hot as Athens. Libya is much hotter than Canada. Track 2.4 There are two people in the doorway of a house. They are cleaning up after a flood. They are wearing trousers and hoodies. The boy on the left has a blue t-shirt and red shorts. He's crying. Next to him, there's a man with a blue bucket. He is emptying the water into a container. The water in the street is brown and muddy. Behind them, there is a woman. She looks very unhappy. Track 2.5 1 Bye, Mum. I'm off to school now. See you about four. Don't forget your coat. It might rain this afternoon. OK, I've got it. Two. I can just see the tornado on the horizon, but it's very dark out there. It's the storm clouds. Shall we go out and take a closer look? Uh, I, I feel safer here because we can take cover in the cellar. And what about your lunch? I'll finish it later. I'm going out to take a look. Bye, darling. Three. Oh, the sun's so hot. Shall we get an ice cream? Oh, not yet. I'm still full from breakfast. Well, I'm going to. Where's the money Mum gave you? The oh, no. I left it on the kitchen table. Oh, well done. Shall we go for a swim? OK. Can we leave our bags here? Yes, they'll be OK. We can see them from the water. Track 2.6 1 Can you tell me what happened? It was terrifying. It was in the middle of the night, so we were in bed. Everything started to shake. Uh, a few moments later, the back of the house collapsed. We all rushed outside and stood in the street. Luckily, no one was injured. And this place is now your home? Yes, we came here yesterday. The church has been very helpful. We have food and water and a roof over our heads. But we've lost everything. Two. There's been virtually no rain in the region for the past two years. 
Normally it's very rainy at this time of year, but the last rain was two months ago. My charity raises money from abroad. My job is to spend it on food and drinking water, but we urgently need more. The government here provides some food and water, but it isn't enough. Politicians make promises, but they often break them. 3. Did you see that fire on the news last night in California? No. Was anyone killed? I don't think so, but it destroyed a lot of houses. The pictures were shocking. The fire moved so fast. Oh, how did it start? Somebody lit a fire in the forest. So it wasn't an accident? Well, it was, actually. They were going to have a barbecue. Oh, that was a bit stupid, in the middle of a heat wave. Did they find the people who started it? Yes, they were the ones who phoned the emergency services. 4. Scientists said last year that it was going to erupt. Well, it finally erupted a couple of days ago and lava poured down the mountain. It destroyed a village and, sadly, a number of people lost their lives. You can still see lava coming out of the ground high up on the mountain and clouds of smoke are still pouring from the top. But it isn't as bad as it was yesterday. Track 2.7 Global Warming Fact File The Earth is heating up. The average surface temperature is 0 0.75 degrees Celsius higher now than it was a hundred years ago. When we burn fossil fuels, they give off greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, CO2. This causes global warming. We have cut down over 50% of the Earth's rainforests in the last 60 years. These are important because they remove CO2 from the atmosphere and add oxygen. They are also home to over half of the world's plant and animal species. Some scientists believe that by 2050, about 35% of all plant and animal species could die out because of climate change. Sea levels are rising and the polar ice caps are melting. Scientists say that fossil fuels like coal and gas may run out by the year 3000. So we need to develop alternatives such as renewable energy and nuclear energy. Track 2.8 In February 2007, Eva Wisniewska a German paraglider, was in Australia with other paragliders preparing for the World Championships. One morning, as they were getting ready to take off, they noticed a thunderstorm approaching. However, they decided to carry on. As the best paragliders, they were skillful enough to keep away from some dark clouds. Unfortunately, as the competitors took off, the weather quickly got worse. Despite Ava's attempt to escape, two enormous clouds came together and trapped her. They pulled her up inside the storm like a leaf in the wind. She flew higher and higher. It was dark and I could hear lightning all around me. She reached nearly 10,000 metres higher than the top of Mount Everest and then lost consciousness. At that height, the temperature was about minus 40 degrees Celsius, and there was very little oxygen. Death seemed certain. For 40 minutes, Ava was unconscious. Waking up, she was still inside the storm. It was dark, and hailstones as big as tennis balls were flying past. But fortunately, her glider, which was spinning above her head, was still in one piece. Eventually, Ava came out of the storm cloud and landed safely near a small farm. When her team reached her, she was 60 kilometres away from the place where she took off. She was weak and covered in ice, but alive. Ava was the luckiest woman in the world. There's no logical reason why she survived. Ava had frostbite on her ears and legs, but a few days later, 
She competed in the World Championships. Track 2.9 One. In the first photo, I can see a busy river market. There are lots of people selling things on boats. In the second photo, I can see a street market at night. It can't be in Britain because some of the shop signs aren't in English. In the foreground, a young man and woman are walking along the street. In the background, there are a few other people. Both photos show people selling things. One obvious difference is that the first photo is taken during the day and the second photo is taken at night. In the first photo, it must be quite warm because some people are wearing T-shirts. But in the second photo, it must be a cold night because the people are wearing winter coats and scarves. In the first photo, the people look very busy. Some of them are chatting together. They probably know each other. In the second photo, the man and woman are probably feeling cold, but not unhappy. 2. In the first photo, I can see a big crowd of people in a very wide street. They're standing on the pavement and they're watching a parade. There are lots of flags. Um, the second photo shows lots of people in boats at a river market. They are selling fruit and vegetables. Some of them are chatting. The main difference between the photos is that the people in the first photo are enjoying themselves. Um, maybe it's a public holiday. Whereas in the second photo, the people are working. The weather seems quite similar in both photos. It's not really cold as there are people in T-shirts. And it's not really hot as some people are wearing jumpers or jackets. I can't really see the expressions on the faces of the people in the photos, but I imagine in the first photo they're happy, as they are at a festival and the weather is fine. In contrast, in the second photo the people are working, so I imagine they are not quite so happy. But they look quite relaxed, and they don't seem unhappy. Track 2.10 In the first photo, I can see a big crowd of people in a very wide street. They're standing on the pavement, and they're watching a parade. There are lots of flags. Um... The second photo shows lots of people in boats at a river market. They are selling fruit and vegetables. Some of them are chatting. The main difference between the photos is that the people in the first photo are enjoying themselves. Um, maybe it's a public holiday. Whereas in the second photo, the people are working. The weather seems quite similar in both photos. It's not really cold, as there are people in T-shirts. And it's not really hot, as some people are wearing jumpers or jackets. I can't really see the expressions on the faces of the people in the photos, but I imagine in the first photo they're happy, as they are at a festival and the weather is fine. In contrast, in the second photo the people are working, so I imagine they are not quite so happy. But they look quite relaxed, and they don't seem unhappy. Track 
Today, we are talking to Yuka Tanaka, professor in meteorology who has been researching the impacts of El Nino and the effect that global warming might have on future El Nino events. Yuka, what can you tell us about your research? Well, we know that El Nino events have become more severe over the past 25 years. The 2015 event contributed to a record number of typhoons in the Central Pacific. 16 were recorded that year, and it is estimated that over 60 million people suffered from hunger and malnutrition in 2016 due to droughts influenced by El Nino. And are they getting worse because of global warming? It's possible, yes, and it's likely to affect the events in the future. What we don't know is whether the events will become stronger or more frequent. So, what can we do to prepare for the next El Nino? Well, the good thing is that scientists can predict when they are coming, and we can prepare. It's important to give early warnings to communities. Having an evacuation plan is essential. And, of course, in the long term, this is just another reason why we all need to focus on global warming and do everything we can to stop it getting worse. Track 2.12 Hello, and thank you for asking me to come and speak to you today. I'd like to start by telling you about how I became a space scientist. I spent a lot of time as a child staring out of my window at the night sky. I also read books from the library and learned all about the planets. I used to stand in the garden and point out the names of the planets to my very patient parents. Science wasn't really my favourite subject when I was at school. I preferred maths. I also played the violin very well, and I thought that music might be my future career. But then I went to the Science Museum in London. There was an exhibition about space travel and also a film about shooting stars. I thought it was amazing that most of the shooting stars we see are meteoroids. That night, I saw a shooting star. I was so excited, I decided right then that I would be a space scientist. I worked hard at school and studied physics at university. After that, I worked as a research assistant at different universities in Britain and later in Japan. People ask me how to become a space scientist. Well, it doesn't matter too much which university you go to, but you need to get the best science degree you can. Follow your dreams and don't give up. Track 2.13 Architect Photo D Cleaner Dentist Engineer Photo A Farm worker Hairdresser Photo B Paramedic Photo C Pilot Programmer Receptionist Sales assistant, solicitor, sports coach, travel agent, waiter. Track 2.14. Speaker 1. Tom. I really wanted to work outdoors over the summer, so when I saw the advertisement for a job as a gardener, I applied for it. I did it for five weeks, and to be honest, I didn't really enjoy it very much. I was unlucky with the weather. It was a very rainy summer. But the main problem was I had to do the same thing every day. It got really boring because there was no variety. At least the hours weren't too long. I started at 10 in the morning and finished at 4 in the afternoon. Then I went home. Most days I didn't see another person all the time I was there. I didn't like that either, really. 
I prefer working with other people. Speaker 2, Katie. I really enjoyed my job at a summer camp. It was seven days a week, so hard work, but that was fine. The children had lessons in the morning. Then every afternoon I'd do sports with them. Football, volleyball, athletics, lots of different things. There were five of us working as sports coaches. We all got on really well, which was great, and we helped each other to plan the afternoon. We arranged matches and competitions for the evenings too, so we usually had to work really late, but we didn't mind. Seeing the children enjoying themselves and learning new activities was great. I loved it. Track 2.15 Hi, Mia. Are you OK? You look a bit anxious. Mm, I've got a job interview in 20 minutes. Oh, <laughs> I won't chat then, I promise. It's OK. I'm going to leave soon anyway. I need to walk to Hilltop Road. Is it far? Not really. It'll take about 10 minutes. Oh, no. Look at that rain. I'm going to get wet. I'll lend you my umbrella. It's OK. I'll call a taxi. There isn't time for that. Here, take it. Oh, thanks. I'll give it back later. Uh, where will you be? I'll wait here for you. Good luck. Track 2.16 A Cathy wants to become a journalist. However... B Working as a pizza delivery man is quite stressful. What's more... C. I think builders have a very boring job. What I mean is... D. The job of gardener is very skilled and challenging. In spite of this... E. I'd like to have a job that pays well, such as... F. The job of sales assistant is very tiring. That's because... Track 2.17 Speaker A Kathy wants to become a journalist. However, her father wants her to work in the family shop. Speaker B Working as a pizza delivery man is quite stressful. What's more, it's badly paid. Speaker C. I think builders have a very boring job. What I mean is, the work is very repetitive. Speaker D. The job of gardener is very skilled and challenging. In spite of this, it isn't very well paid. Speaker E. I'd like to have a job that pays well, such as... Stunt performer or police officer. Speaker F. The job of sales assistant is very tiring. That's because you're on your feet all day. Track 2.18 Today, in our series about unusual jobs, I'm talking to Sean Aiken. Sean spent a year doing not one job, but 52, one for each week of the year. Hello, Sean, and welcome to the show. Hi. So, when did you come up with this idea? When I finished university. I realised I had no idea what I wanted to do. So, how did you come up with the idea of 52 jobs? Well, my dad said I should do something I was passionate about, but I didn't know what that was. So I set up the website OneWeekJob.com. I asked employers all over the world to give me a job for just one week so I could find out what I enjoyed. Was it difficult to get 52 different jobs? Some people offered me a job when they heard about what I was doing, but I found most of the jobs by searching online. What kind of jobs did you do? Radio DJ, fireman... A journalist, yoga teacher, baker, they weren't all in one place, of course. 
so I had to travel a lot. Did you take any holiday? No, I worked for 52 weeks without stopping. It was incredibly tiring, and I was always short of money. Didn't your employers pay you? They paid me, but I donated all of my wages to charity. What was the most challenging job? Working on a farm. That was so hard. I had to get up at five o'clock every morning, and the work was very tiring. And what did you learn from your 52 jobs? Well, you need to be really passionate about what you do. It's more than just money, and it's important that you work with people that you get on with and who have similar interests to you. So, would you do it again? Well, at the moment, I'm helping other people to do their own 52-week job project. I've found that I'm passionate about helping others. Great! So, if anyone listening likes the sound of that, get in touch with Sean. Thank you for coming in and talking to us, Sean. Track 2.19 Cooperate Ex-wife Microchip Multicolored Overcooked Post-war Rewrite Semicircle Undercooked Track 2.20 A. Back in 2012, Andrew Johnson planned to apply to a film school after graduation rather than look for a job. But then his dad noticed an advertisement for a job with toy manufacturer Lego. Andrew, who was already a Lego fan, sent in an application. It included a video of himself making models. The company loved it and invited him to participate in an unusual interview. He had to compete against seven other finalists in a model building test. Andrew won. As a result, he was employed at Legoland Discovery Center in Illinois as a master model builder. Lego was just a hobby, but now I can do what I love and get paid for it, said Andrew happily in an interview. B. Some film providers, like Netflix, employ people to watch new films and TV series, then ask them to make a note of what type of film it is, horror, rom-com, etc., what age group and type of person might like it. The film provider can then recommend it to their members. Joe Mason finished his degree in film studies about two years ago and didn't know what to do next. Then. He read an article about film taggers. The job was so fantastic, and he wrote to Netflix. At first, they weren't interested, but when Joe told them he speaks fluent French, they gave him a job. He watches French films and TV programmes. It's a great job because I can have flexible working hours, said he. The only problem with the job is that Joe can't choose what he wants to watch. Track 2.21 So, we have three jobs available this summer. Have you had a chance to look at them? Yes, I have. Um, I'm not sure about the job of fruit picker. Although it's well paid, it'll be very tiring. You have to work all day in the fields. Not only that, it might be rainy too, so you'll get very wet and cold. Some people like the idea of being outside in the fresh air all day. I know, but I prefer working inside. Well, what about the job of sales assistant? Yes, I quite like the look of that one. I'm very keen on fashion, so I'll find it interesting to work in a clothes shop. I'm sure I'll enjoy it, even though the hours are long. And the money isn't great. What about this third job, dishwasher? It's better paid than the sales assistant. Hmm... Yes, I like the idea of being part of a team, but I don't think washing up in a restaurant kitchen will be very rewarding. It'll be really repetitive. So which job do you want to apply for? Um, well, not fruit picking. That's really hard work and I'm not very physically fit. Not the job of dishwasher either. 
The job is quite well paid. However, I really don't want to work in a kitchen. So I'd like to apply for the job of sales assistant. The pay is not very good. Nevertheless, I'm choosing this job because I'm interested in fashion. Track 2.22 Anita Perilli was born in 1942 in Littlehampton, a town in the south of England. After leaving school, she trained as an English teacher, but before she found a job, she decided to travel around the world. When Anita returned to Britain, she met a Scottish man called Gordon Roddick. They fell in love and got married. They had two daughters and moved to Brighton. It was there in 1976 that Anita Roddick opened the first body shop store. She wanted to sell cosmetics that were natural and not tested on animals. She also recycled the bottles that contained her products. Customers could bring them back to the shop and refill them. Six months later, she opened another shop, and by 1991 there were 700 body shop stores. By 2004, the body shop had over 2,000 stores, with 71 million customers in 51 countries. Anita Roddick was passionate about social and environmental issues. She gave money to many charities, including Greenpeace and Amnesty International. She joined anti-globalisation protests and criticised big oil companies that did not invest in renewable energy. Near the end of her life, she sold Body Shop to L'Oreal, one of the world's largest cosmetic companies. Many of her customers were angry, but she gave most of her money to charities. She died in 2007 at the age of 64. Track 2.23 Jamsechi Nasarwanji Tata was an Indian industrialist and entrepreneur. He was one of the most influential people in the world of industry and is often called the father of Indian industry. It all started in 1858, when Jamsechi joined his father's export trading business. He worked there until he was 29, when he started his own company, a cotton mill. He went on to establish several other cotton mills. His companies became famous for being efficient and producing the best quality cotton. In 1898, Tata donated 14 buildings for a research institute that later became the Indian Institute of Science. His family gave a lot of money to education and scientific research and helped the progress of science in India. In 1901, Tata began organising large steel factories. After he died in 1904, his two sons continued his steel companies until they became the largest private steel makers in India. Tata Steel, in fact, became one of the largest steel companies in the world. Tata's family went on to create many companies, including the Tata Power Company, India's largest private electricity company. And in 1932, Tata Airlines, which eventually became Indian Airlines. Since then, they have also bought a London-based tea company and British car companies Jaguar and Land Rover. The Tata family have been incredibly successful and have done a lot to help people in India. Their business empire is still going strong today. Track 2.24 1. Do you enjoy adventure? Have you ever been white water rafting or canoeing on a river? If the answer is yes, then you're the kind of person we're looking for to work on our summer camps. We have summer activity camps in the south of France in July and August this year. Experience of working with young people is preferred. All our staff have one day off a week and the opportunity for travel at the end of August. Please see our website for more details. 2. 
I'm a creative person, and I enjoy making things. I'm good at selling things too. At the moment, I'm making silver jewelry and selling it on the internet. When I leave school, I'd like to study business and finance at university. Then I'll work for a company for a couple of years before I set up my own business. I'm really interested in business, so I'm sure I'll be successful. Three. I've always wanted to be an actor. When I was at school, I was in the drama club and I performed in all the school plays. I was also in a drama club outside school on Saturdays. I learned a lot of skills there. We did acting, of course, but also singing and dancing. I got my first part in the theatre when I was ten, in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Then I did some adverts on TV and then some children's TV. Track two point twenty five. One. This is a kind of mushroom called a white truffle. It is highly prized in cooking, and the best ones can cost over ten thousand euros per kilogram. A single white truffle was once sold for over two hundred and thirty thousand euros. You might think that's a lot of money to pay for a mushroom, but truffles are very rare, and only grow for a couple of months each year. Two. This pen, called the Mont Blanc Lorenzo de Medici fountain pen, costs six thousand eight hundred and fifty pounds. It's made of sterling silver and is engraved by hand. Three. This pair of melons cost over two million yen at an auction in Japan. That's twelve thousand pounds. Fruit is a popular gift in Japan to say thank you to a friend or to your boss at work. Melons need to be perfectly round and exactly the right colour. Perfect apples and strawberries are also popular gifts, but these Yubari King melons are the most expensive. Four. These are Nike trainers dipped in real gold. They were created by the designer Just Another Rich Kid. He created five pairs of these Nike Air Dunks for five thousand four hundred dollars each. The New York-based artist, real name Ken Courtney, created the glitzy shoes as part of a collection called Indulgences for the man who has everything. Five. How much do you usually pay for a haircut? If you're in New York City and want Orlando Peter to do it. You'll need to pay about eight hundred dollars. Is it worth it? Well, ask Madonna or Gwyneth Paltrow or Anne Hathaway. They all go to Orlando Peter when they need a haircut. Track two point twenty six. One. You can buy white truffles at a deli. Two. You can buy a pen at a stationer's. Three. You can buy melons at a greengrocer's. Four. You can buy trainers at a shoe shop. Five. You can get a haircut at a hairdresser's. Track two point twenty seven. Bakers. Bank. Butchers. Charity shop, chemists, coffee shop, clothes shop, cosmetics store, deli, delicatessen, DIY store, estate agents, florists, garden centre, greengrocers, hairdressers, jewellers, laundrette. News agents, opticians, post office, shoe shop, stationers, 
Takeaway Track 2.28 1. Can I help you? Uh, yes, I'd like to buy two litres of white paint, please. Oh, and some paintbrushes. Sure. Uh, can I use this coupon? Oh, I'm not sure. Can I see it? Oh, I'm sorry. It's too old. Oh, really? Yes. Look at this date. Used before the 31st of August 2009. Wow. I've had that a long time. Hmm. Two. Hi. I'm looking for a magazine. It's called Great Train Journeys. Have you got it? Sure. How much is it? It's £1.95. Really? That's very cheap. Yes, it's on special offer this month. The normal price is £6.95. Oh, OK. Three. Hello, can I help you? Yes. How much are these jeans, please? Oh, I'm not sure. Is there a price tag? I can't see one. It's usually here near the top. Yes, there it is. Uh, £85? <laughs> Sorry, they're far too expensive for me. Well, we've got some cheaper pairs over there. Thanks. Four. Can I help you? Yes. I'm interested in the diamond ring that's in your window. The one with the large diamond in the centre? Yes, that's right. I is it £2,500? Yes, it's a bargain, isn't it? Mm, I don't know. Uh, that seems rather expensive. I realise it's a lot of money, but believe me, it's a big diamond for that price. Track 2.29 What are you doing? I'm doing my geography project. Look at this photo. It's shocking that some people have so much and others have so little. The world would be much better if money didn't exist. What do you mean? If money didn't exist, how would you buy things? If you needed something, you would make it. If you couldn't make it, you would swap with somebody else. So if I wanted a new mobile phone, how would I get it? <laughs> you don't need things like that. I'm talking about essentials, food, clothes, that kind of thing. At the moment, millions of people haven't even got those. If money didn't exist, life wouldn't be better for poor people. No, I think it would. If nobody had any money, everybody would be equal. Track 2.30 Glenn James didn't expect to get a reward for what he did. He thought he was just doing the right thing. But because of his honesty, this poor homeless man from Boston now has enough money to live comfortably. Last February, James, who has been homeless for five years, was in a shopping centre when he noticed a bag on the floor. Nobody was near it. He picked it up and looked inside. He couldn't believe his eyes. There was $42,000 in cash and traveller's checks in the bag. James didn't think for one moment of keeping the money. He left the shopping centre and stopped a police car that was passing and handed the bag to them. The bag also contained passports and tickets, and the police soon found the owner of the bag, a Chinese student who was visiting Boston. When Ethan Whittington, a manager at an advertising agency, heard the story on the news, he decided to help James. He wanted to make life better for him. 26-year-old Whittington set up a website where people could donate money to James. He hoped to raise $50,000, but soon there was over $100,000. James is surprised and delighted at receiving the money. I was only doing the right thing, he says. Now I'll have enough money to open a bank account. Track 2.31 1. Last week I was looking for a present for my friend Amy. She's quite fussy, but I found a nice scarf in a clothes store. I was about to pay for it when I noticed a £10 note on the floor. 
I handed it to the shop assistant, and she said she'd keep it in case anyone came back for it. 2. I bought a baseball cap yesterday, but as I was leaving the shop, I noticed that the shop assistant had overcharged me. I was paying by card and I didn't check the amount before I entered my pin. It said £10 on the price ticket, but she charged me £15. I complained, but it didn't help. She said, you can have all the money back, but I can't sell it to you for £10. I bought it anyway, but I'm glad I did. It's a really cool cap. 3. It's always a mistake to buy things in a sale. I always ask myself, would you buy it if it was full price? If the answer is no, probably not, then I don't buy it. There's a lovely leather jacket that I want, but it costs so much. I only get £6 a week from my parents, so it'll be a while before I can afford it. I'm sure Dad would lend me the money if I asked him, but I'd rather not. 4. Last month I borrowed some money from my parents to buy a necklace. I fell in love with it, although it was expensive. My mum tried to persuade me not to spend so much, but I bought it anyway. A week later, I decided I didn't like it after all so I decided to return it to the shop. But I couldn't find the receipt, so I couldn't exchange it or get a refund. I've wasted a lot of money, and I owe my mum £60. Track 2.32 Box Clever Aaron Levy loves tin spaghetti. He lives in a small apartment. At the age of 27, his biggest luxury is his smartphone. If you met him, you probably wouldn't realize that he is a multi-millionaire. However, as co-founder and CEO of Box, a successful IT company, he is worth about $100 million. He loves his job and works hard. Most days, he does not leave the office until after midnight. Levy and his friend Dylan Smith started Box in 2005 while still at university. It offered a better way of storing data, cloud storage. Like most new businesses, Box did not bring in much income at the start. When it began, Levy and Smith looked for funding, but couldn't find any investors. Back in 2005, cloud storage was quite a new idea. For that reason, nobody wanted to risk lending them money. Eventually, a well-known entrepreneur called Mark Cuban agreed to put money into Box. Soon, Box grew quickly and had contracts with many of the biggest companies in the USA. Now, Box has grown a lot, and so have its profits, making Levy a multi-millionaire. Most people his age would lead an extravagant lifestyle if they had so much money. But Levy says that it doesn't interest him. I'm certainly not into money. He only goes to expensive restaurants if an important customer wants to eat there. Otherwise, he has lunch meetings in burger bars. And I still like tin spaghetti. I'd be happy if I had it every day. Track 2.33 I'd like to start by saying that I don't believe schools spend enough money on any of these things. The reason I say that is that very few students in our school play musical instruments. And not many do sport either, except PE, which is a lesson. Not only that... We hardly ever go on school trips, perhaps just once a year. Now, let's move on to the question of which of the three schools should spend the most money on. If I have to choose just one, I'd say that we should spend the most on music. I'll tell you why I think that. First, 
there are lots of opportunities for students to do sport outside school. In my town, for example, there's a sports centre where we can swim, go to the gym, play squash, basketball, football, and so on. Second, students often go on trips and holidays with their parents, so there's no need for the school to spend money on school trips. Finally, and most importantly, very few people have musical instruments at home, and not many parents play musical instruments themselves. So. Without encouragement and help from the school, most students will miss out on music. To sum up, I believe that schools should spend money on all these things, but music is the most important. Track two point thirty four. The World Bank is an international financial organization founded in nineteen forty four at the United Nations Monetary and Financial Conference. It is closely connected to the United Nations, and its headquarters are located in Washington D.C. The bank currently has over nine thousand employees working in more than one hundred representative offices worldwide. It is made up of two institutions: International Bank for Reconstruction and Development (IBRD) and International Development Association (IDA). Each has its own role in improving the living standards of people in low-income countries. As a member, Vietnam has a strong relationship with the World Bank. Most projects and programs funded by the World Bank for Vietnam have focused mainly on areas such as agriculture, energy, transport, health, education, banking, and finance. These programs and projects have effectively contributed to Vietnam's development. Track two point thirty five. In an effort to help Vietnam's development, the World Bank has paid special attention to improving education through a lot of projects. In two thousand and eleven, for example, Vietnam welcomed a project worth three million U.S. dollars for the education of deaf children. A year later, eighty four point six million dollars was spent on a project named Global Partnership for Education. Vietnam Escuela Nueva project. Its aim was to introduce new teaching and learning methods to primary students in the most disadvantaged areas. In 2013, the Higher Education Development Policy Program was approved, a project to improve education in post-secondary institutions, which received 50 million dollars. Two years later, the World Bank continued its support through another project called Renovation of General Education Project, which aimed to make changes to the curriculum and improve student learning outcomes. Its total spending on this project was seventy-seven million dollars. These are just a few of many ongoing education projects supported by the World Bank in Vietnam. Track two point thirty-six. One. Hello and welcome to George Lewis. I'd like to remind you all that this week is Sales Week in our shop. You will find plenty of bargains on every floor. There is fifty percent off many items in ladies' and men's fashion, and also children's clothing. You can save twenty percent on digital cameras and some mobile phones too. And don't forget to visit our cafe for our offer of the week menu. One child goes free with each paying adult. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy shopping here at George Lewis. Two. Hi, Lucy. Katie told me you're going to South America next year. Yeah, that's right. I want to take a gap year and travel around, and work a bit too. I'd love to do that, but I haven't got any money. You need to save up. But that's really hard. How do you do it? Do you stay at home all the time? No, you don't need to do that. But I work in the holidays and sometimes at weekends. I don't buy many clothes or CDs anymore either. I still go out, but not every night. Maybe I need to get a job then. I think that's a good idea. Three. Hey, Jake. Are you still looking for a job? No, I found something in town. In that new clothes shop that opened on the high street last month, my brother's still looking though. Oh, right. 
Well, you can tell him I saw an advert in the restaurant near my house for part-time waiters. That sounds good. Is it evenings or lunch times? I don't know. I've got the number. Do you want to give it to him? OK, thanks. I'll put it in my phone. Track 3.2 Aquarium, Botanical Garden, Castle, Cathedral, Fountain, Bay, Market, Mosque, Museum, National Park, Palace, Ruins, Statue, Temple, Theme Park, Tower, Water Park. Photo A is the Eiffel Tower in France. Photo B is the Blue Mosque in Turkey. Photo C is the Statue of Liberty in the USA. Photo D is the ruins of Machu Picchu in Peru. Photo E is Hat Long Bay in Vietnam. Photo F is the Masai Mara National Reserve, a national park in Kenya. Photo G is Buckingham Palace in England. Track 3.3 Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to your Golden Days coach tour across Europe. I hope you all enjoyed your day in Berlin yesterday. Well, today we're going to head south across Germany and over the border into the Czech Republic. We're going to spend a day in the capital, Prague, and we'll visit Havel's Market. There you can buy souvenirs, paintings. It's quite touristy, but there are lots of interesting things to see. After some more sightseeing in Prague, we're going to head southeast across Slovakia and into Hungary. There's lots to see and do in Budapest, but I recommend visiting the Liberty Statue. It's very impressive. When we leave Hungary, we'll travel south through Croatia, all the way down to Dubrovnik. The old harbour there is a very romantic place to have dinner in the evening. The next day we're crossing to Italy by ferry. Rome is the next and final stop on our tour. And when we're in Rome, don't miss the wonderful and historic Trevi Fountain. Now, are there any questions? No? Well, Fasten your seat belts and let's set off. Track 3.4 Have you ever been to Bulgaria? Yes, I went there last year with my family. Have you been there? No, I haven't. What cities did you visit? We didn't visit any cities. We went skiing. Sounds great. I've never been skiing, but I'd love to go. Was it good? Not really. I fell and broke my leg on the first day, so I spent the rest of the holiday in hospital. Track 3.5 Did you go to Spain in July? No, we went to Portugal, and we went in August. Where did you fly to? We drove there, actually. Track 3.6 1 No, he flew to Italy last summer. No, he flew to Italy last summer. 2. I'd like a black coffee, please. I'd like a black coffee, please. 3. No, we're meeting at 3.50. No, we're meeting at 3.50. 4. I haven't got a credit card. I haven't got a credit card. 5. I'll have a ham sandwich, please. I'll have a ham sandwich, please. Track 3.7 Georgina Hepworth relaxed back in her seat. Two hours into her flight, she turned to the woman next to her and said, I'm really looking forward to my holiday in Spain. Oh, when are you going to Spain then? asked the woman. Well, 
Now, of course, said Georgina. The woman looked puzzled. Not on this plane, she replied. That's when Georgina found out that her plane wasn't heading for Granada in Spain, but for the island of Grenada in the Caribbean. The Spanish city is 1,500 kilometres south of London. The island is 7,000 kilometres away on the other side of the Atlantic. When Georgina decided to go to Spain, she called a travel agent to book the flight. When the tickets arrived, she didn't notice that one letter was wrong. It said G R E N A D A, not G R A N A D A, Georgina explained. The flight attendant was very sympathetic and allowed Georgina to sit in a first class seat. When the plane finally arrived in the Caribbean, the airline put her in a hotel for the night and then, on the following day, flew her to Granada in Spain. The travel agent apologised. It was just a misunderstanding, said Georgina. I'm certainly not complaining. They've even given me a free holiday in Austria. Let's hope they don't send me a ticket to Australia. Track 3.8 Bag drop Boarding pass Check-in desk Departure gate Departure lounge Departure screen Flight attendant Flight number Hand luggage Passport control Seatbelt Security check. Window seat. Track 3.9 Where do you usually go on holiday? To the beach or the mountains? Have you ever tried an adventure holiday or even an ecotourism holiday? A. Hilary Bratt, aged 15 Last year, I went to Guatemala on an ecotourism holiday with my family. We stayed with a local family of coffee farmers. They showed us how to harvest coffee, carry it in a special backpack and roast it. I don't really like the taste of coffee, but I loved the smell when we roasted it. The best part was that I made friends with a girl on the farm and now we're pen friends. I'm even learning Spanish. B. Kevin Rushby, aged 16. For our last family holiday, we went to the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. It was amazing. I saw loads of multicoloured fish and even learned how to dive. We also visited a turtle sanctuary and helped to take baby turtles out to the beach, their natural habitat. Forgetting the sun cream, I got really sunburned. It was worth it, though, to see the baby turtles swimming away. C. Terry Neung Age 16. Last summer, I went to Nam Kat Tien in South Vietnam with my aunt, uncle, and cousins. My aunt loves adventure holidays. We stayed on a campsite in the jungle, and the local guide took us to see local wildlife. On the first day, I saw a wild boar and a monkey who ran away with my sunglasses. I tried chasing it to get them back. I got separated from the group and didn't know where they were. I was terrified. Finally, I heard the guide calling me. I wasn't lost for long, but it felt like ages. Track 3.10 So, we're going to London next month. How exciting. Shall we plan our trip? Yes. First of all, shall we decide where to stay? Yes, let's do that. How much do we want to spend? I don't want to spend very much. Why don't we stay in a cheap hotel? I'm not sure about that. The beds in cheap hotels are always so uncomfortable. OK. This hotel near the station looks good. I'm not sure. It might be quite noisy. What about staying in this hotel near the centre? I don't mind. You choose. Now, 
What tourist attractions do you want to see? It would be nice to visit an art gallery. Yes, I like that idea. Do you fancy going to a concert too? I'm not very keen on that idea. I'd rather go to the theatre, actually. OK, why not? There are lots of good shows to choose from. What about places to eat? What kind of food do you like? I love fish and chips. Do you fancy getting some fish and chips on the first evening? What a good idea. I like Italian food too. So we can find a pizzeria on another evening. Yes. Now, what's the best way to travel round London? We could always get a travel card. You can travel as often as you like on buses and the underground with a travel card. That's a really good plan. How much is a travel card? I think it's about £10 a day. OK, I'll get two of those for us. Track 3.11 I'm really looking forward to our trip to London. Shall we book a hotel? OK. Or maybe a hostel. They are much cheaper. I like that idea. We can find one online. OK. What kind of tourist attractions would you like to visit? Well, I'd like to see Buckingham Palace and the Houses of Parliament. And I'd like to go shopping too. Me too. We could go to one of the markets. Sorry, did you say supermarket? No, market. For example, Covent Garden or Camden. Cool. It would be nice to visit a park too. Do you know if there are any good parks in London? Yes. Hyde Park and Regent's Park are very beautiful. Pardon? Hyde Park and Regent's Park. They're right in the centre. They are very beautiful. What about restaurants? I suppose there are lots of good restaurants in the centre. Yes, but lots of them are very pricey. Sorry, what does pricey mean? Expensive. Oh, I see. Well, we can find cheap ones, I'm sure. How are we going to travel around in London? We can walk if we want to save money. I don't like that idea. It'll be too tiring. Well, let's take buses then. Maybe we can hire bicycles too. I'd rather not. Cycling in cities can be quite dangerous. OK, let's use the buses then. Or should we use the underground? It's quicker than the bus. I don't mind. They're both good ideas. OK, let's use the underground. I'm looking forward to this holiday. Track 3.12 Hello, welcome to The Travel Show. Today I'm going to be talking to Zhang from the Da Nang Visitor Centre in Vietnam. He's here to talk about a magical tourist destination, which opened there in 2018 and has already received a lot of attention around the world. Hi there. Yes, the Golden Bridge. Tell us about it. Well, it's 150 metres long and connects a cable car station with the gardens in the Ba Na Hills Resort. So, it was built for tourists? Yes, exactly. It's really unique. Firstly, because of its beautiful color, gold. When the sun shines, the bridge looks spectacular against the green of the forests below. It sits nearly 1,000 meters above sea level, so the views are incredible. Oh, that sounds amazing. Secondly, there are two giant stone hands that appear to support the bridge in the air, like the hands of a god. People love taking photos next to them. Yes, I've seen friends' photos on Instagram. There you go. So, listeners, if you are planning a trip to Vietnam, make sure you put the Golden Bridge on your list of places to visit. Thanks very much for coming on the show, Zhang.
Thank you. Track 3.13 Have you had a holiday this year, Lucy? Yes, I went to Spain in May with my mum, my dad and my little brother. We stayed in a little village near Malaga. Oh yeah, I've been to Malaga a few times. My uncle's got a flat there. He works in a hotel. Malaga's pretty busy. Yes, it is. But I like lively places. I'm not so keen on villages. Yes, but it isn't boring in the villages near Malaga. We went camping, hiking and cycling. The countryside is really beautiful. I like doing that kind of thing at home. But when I'm on holiday, I prefer lying on the beach and then going to cafes in the evenings. There were some lovely cafes in the village we went to, and the people were so friendly. Was the food good? It was amazing. I love Spanish tapas. I love paella. I really want to do a Spanish cookery course. I could teach you. Really? Yeah. My uncle's a chef at the hotel too. He taught me everything he knows. Lucky you. I'd like to visit your uncle's hotel. Well, next time you go to Malaga, you can go there. I'll give you the address. Thanks. Are you going again soon? I don't think so. I haven't got any money. I'd get a job if I were you. I'm working in my local supermarket in the summer because I want to go to Italy in September. Hmm. Maybe I'll give them a ring and ask about a job then. Track 3.14 Aluminium Cardboard Ceramic Concrete Copper Glass Gold Iron Leather Nylon Paper Plastic Rubber Steel Stone Wood. Track 3.15 1. This is lovely. Isn't it lovely? What is it exactly? It's a coffee machine. Oh, yes, of course. Is it battery powered? No, it's mains powered. Look, the cable's here under the base. If you press this button, the plug appears. That's clever. I love it. It's perfect for my kitchen at home. I'll come back later today and buy it. Would you like to try a cup before you go? I'm sorry? A cup of coffee. Oh, no thanks. I never drink coffee. Horrible stuff. 2. I see you're looking at the cycling machines. Cycling machines? Oh, yes. Yes, they're very nice, aren't they? A very unusual design. It will look great in your living room. You don't need to put it away if friends come to visit. Yes, I see. Good idea. And it's got a long handle. Is that for carrying it? Uh, no, that's the seat. Oh. It's leather. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, it's heavy, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it's got a triangular base that's made of iron. It allows you to cycle very fast without the whole thing shaking. Oh. And what are these buttons for? That's the computer. If you choose Share Mode, it automatically posts your workout results on Facebook. I see. Yes, I really like it. The thing is, I joined a gym recently. Oh, right. But my son is trying to get fit, and he would use it, I'm sure. Track 3.16 1. It was really kind of you to lend me your laptop. I'm really grateful. 2. Please come to the shop with me. I really need your advice on what cooker to buy. And I don't want to go on my own. 3. This esport match is going to be tough. The other team are really strong. But I think you can win if you really want to. 4. 
I'm sorry, but my phone screen is not as large as advertised. Could you change it, please? Five. I'm sorry to hear that your new product has. Phone screen is not as large as advertised. Could you change it, please? Five. I'm sorry to hear that your new product hasn't been selling well. I know you're upset, but I'm sure things will be better soon. Six. It's great to see so many of you here today for the launch event. Thank you very much for coming. I hope you enjoy our new gadget. Today for the launch event. Thank you very much for coming. I hope you enjoy our new gadget. Enjoy our new gadget. Track 3.17 1. Your poor eyesight is due to too much exposure to blue light. This has probably been caused by looking at digital screen too much, especially at night time. I can certainly prescribe some drugs that will help to better your eyesight. But initially, I'd like you to make some changes to your habits at work. Try to avoid sitting at your desktop or laptop for hours on end. You really should stop using mobile devices before bedtime. Try also to work in natural light as much as possible. Come back to me in three months. If your eyesight doesn't improve, we will consider a course of treatment at that point. Two. You'll be delighted to hear that the new multimedia classroom which the school purchased has finally come into use. It consists of an interactive board and 50 desktops, all of which are hooked up to the highest capacity internet network. It runs various self-study softwares of every single subject on the school's curriculum, so it is very useful for students to work on whatever aspect they need to improve. It'll also allow students to practice communicative skills of foreign languages. We were able to set up this multimedia classroom thanks to the money we made at the Christmas fair. We are very grateful to all the people who donated unwanted items for the stalls and who made all those delicious cakes and biscuits. Without you, we wouldn't have this wonderful self-study space. I'm sure this classroom will be in high demand from the word go. Track 3.18 The Telharmonium The Telharmonium was the world's first electronic musical instrument. It was designed by Thaddeus Cahill in 1897. Music from the instrument was broadcast to people's homes using a telephone. Before the invention of the radio, people loved these first home concerts. After Cahill's death in 1934, his brother kept one of the three models, but in 1962 it was destroyed. No recordings of the music were kept, so the telharmonium and its unique sound have disappeared forever. The Writing Ball Invented in 1865 by Rasmus Marling Hansen from Denmark, the writing ball was a machine for typing onto paper. Its use of electricity made the movement faster. However, you could not see the paper as you were typing. Nevertheless, the writing ball was very successful. Since each model was made by hand, it was soon replaced by other cheaper machines produced in factories. A new keyboard with a different key arrangement appeared. The once popular writing ball was forgotten. The Antikythera Mechanism In 1901, an ancient machine was discovered on a ship near the Greek island of Antikythera. It had been made about 1,900 years earlier, in 2 BCE. 
For many years after its discovery, nobody understood exactly what the machine was for. In the 1970s, scientists found that this ancient computer had been designed to predict the movements of the sun, the moon, and the planets. It did this using more than 30 handmade metal wheels of different sizes. Reconstructions have been made, and the device works perfectly. Track 3.19 Hello, can I help you? Yes, I bought this portable DVD player here six months ago, and there's a problem with it. Oh dear, what's wrong with it? I can't switch it on. I press the on-off button and nothing happens. Let me have a look. Yes, you're right. Are the batteries fully charged? Yes, they are. It doesn't work even when the power lead is connected. Have you got the receipt? Yes. Um, here it is. I'd like to exchange it, please. I'm afraid that won't be possible. It's over a month old, you see. Is there anything else you can do? We can repair it for you. How long will that take? About two to three weeks. OK, then. Repair it, please. Track 3.20 Hello. How can I help you? I bought this tablet here last week. There's a problem with it. Oh, what's wrong with it? The screen is broken. Look. How did that happen? I dropped it. Oh, dear. Well, we can repair it for you, but you'll have to pay for the repair. Why? It's only a week old. Can I have my money back, please? No, I'm afraid you can't. You broke it, you see. It isn't a fault with the tablet. But it shouldn't break when you drop it, and it was in its case. The glass is very delicate. It can break quite easily. I'm very sorry, but there's nothing I can do. Can I exchange it, please? No. As I said, we can repair it, but we'll have to charge you. Well, how much will it cost? About £80, I think. £80? Well, I'm not happy about that. Can I see the manager, please? He isn't in the shop at the moment. Well, if you won't exchange it or give me a refund, I'm going to write to the manager. As you wish. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye. Track 3.22 Like physical museums, virtual museums can transport visitors to the past. For example, the Museum of Flight, Seattle, USA, shows its visitors the early days of aviation history. But virtual museums have a number of benefits. To begin with, they enable people to admire precious heritages around the world without doing any damage to them. Thanks to virtual museums, archaeological sites are visually accessible to the public while remaining perfectly preserved. The Terracotta Warriors and Horses Museum in China, for example, gives visitors a virtual experience of swooping into the tomb walking among the terracotta soldiers and viewing their facial expressions. In addition, virtual museums offer education and entertainment at the same time, making learning more enjoyable and making information memorable. Last but not least, virtual museums are accessible regardless of the time and location. Vietnamese students can easily explore the Natural History Museum in London without having to travel to the UK.